In a dark morgue, the body of Nemo is being pushed inside a cold cabinet. Suddenly he wakes up, only to find himself drowning in his car, but soon the moment changes again to him waking up in a tub, only to find a man shooting him. Next he wakes up in a strange capsule inside a space station that suddenly explodes. As Nemo dies again, he wakes up in a post-apocalyptic hospital where Dr. Feldman is watching over him. Nemo insists he's 34 years old and that he's in 2009, but Feldman corrects him, explaining the year is 2092 and that Nemo is actually 118. To prove it, he gives Nemo a mirror and a very advanced newspaper with moving pictures so Nemo can finally see himself all old and wrinkly. Nemo closes his eyes and wakes up in his old home, surrounded by his lovely family. However he feels like doesn't belong here, and he calls his kids the wrong name. At that moment an envelope arrives and Nemo opens it to find a picture of himself with a different family. As his kids call him out for using the wrong names, Nemo zones out again and wakes up in another house, resting near the pool. The kids from the picture are here and so is his wife Jean, who comes to check on him because he doesn't look well. She announces his friends from work are here, but Nemo doesn't pay attention to them, his eyes are on the television screen where the news is showing a car accident on the bridge. Suddenly everything begins moving backward and Nemo finds himself as a driver on that bridge, and next to him he finds Anna as his bride. They are driving behind a truck, and the vehicle explodes as he saw on the news, now Nemo wakes up again in the futuristic hospital. It's then revealed that Nemo is actually the last mortal man to live on Earth, and there are no records of him anywhere. The rest of humanity has conquered mortality through the endless renewal of cells, they don't even get frisky anymore, and owning a pet pig is a sign of status. Now everyone is following the news of Nemo as if it was a reality show and a famous TV host decides to put out a controversial poll, the public will decide if they'll allow Nemo to die naturally or they'll keep him alive with new technology. Nemo hates the flying camera that spies on him and gives it the finger, then he closes the window to keep it away. Wanting some answers, Feldman begins using hypnosis to get Nemo to try to remember how he got here. Nemo closes his eyes and suddenly finds himself inside a creepy facility where everyone is wearing the same clothes and has the same bedroom. Freaking out at the sight, Nemo runs outside and looks at various signs, thinking they're trying to tell him something. Suddenly a few guards drag him back inside as Feldman tells him to go further back in his memories. Now Nemo is a little baby hanging out with the other children before they're born. At that age, everyone has a whole knowledge of their future, but when the time comes to be born, the angels of oblivion touch their lips to make them forget. However the angels accidentally skip Nemo, and he's born with the skill to predict all his possible futures. The babies are allowed to choose their families, and after looking at a variety of offers that go from nice to weirdos, Nemo chooses a gentle couple just because the woman smells nice and the man shares a nice story about how he met his wife by bumping into her on the streets, which he believes was thanks to the butterfly effect. Nemo grows into a child quite happily, with his parents always making sure he feels loved. Back in the future, old Nemo wakes up to find a journalist entering his room. Visits are supposed to be forbidden, but he knows a nurse that sneaked him in. To make Nemo feel more comfortable, he took an old recorder from a museum, and he is here to ask Nemo about what life was like before immortality. Nemo begins telling him details about the old society like pollution, cigarettes, meat, and actual reproduction, then he begins sharing his own story. The first memory is of Nemo working as a young adult in a television studio, where he narrates educational videos. He talks about the creation of the universe and the concept of time, which makes him think about what it was like to grow up seeing all his possible futures. Every choice he has to make is a pain, and whenever he walks by the three prettiest girls in town, he can see himself marrying all three of them. These are Jean, Elise, and Anna, who have already been seen in his other memories. One day, Nemo has a dream of his father accidentally running over a woman with a child. When he wakes up, Nemo tries to warn his father, but it's too late, the man has left the car badly parked and now the vehicle is going downhill, crushing the mother and the baby. The father is left in a very depressed state, and Nemo tries to tell his mother about the fact he can see the future, but his mother doesn't believe him and says he's only experiencing deja vu. When Nemo goes to his first swimming lesson, he gets very nervous when he sees Anna and hides behind a door to watch her swim, feeling how he slowly falls in love with her. After everyone is gone, Nemo jumps in the pool, but since he missed the lesson he can't swim. Suddenly he wakes up as an adult inside the sinking car, but at the same time he sees the other timeline with Jean rescuing him from the pool. In the future, the journalist is very confused because Nemo keeps contradicting himself or falling asleep in the middle of the story. The next memory is about little Nemo following his mother into the forest, where he's shocked to discover she's cheating on her father with a guy called Harry. After his mother leaves, Nemo follows Harry, and he's upset to find out he's Anna's father. From then on, Nemo's parents keep on arguing every day, until eventually they decide they're getting a divorce. Later at a train station, his parents tell Nemo he has to choose whom to live with. Nemo loves them both and doesn't know what to choose, but as the train starts taking off, Nemo can't help running after it to reach his mother. At first he manages to make it and jumps inside to reunite with his mom, but soon the image changes to him missing the train and his father hugging him. This is the point where Nemo's life splits into two clear timelines. 
In the future, the journalist insists that Nemo couldn't have lived both, not understanding all the options are real. During his life with his mother, Nemo's grows up to be a brooding rebellious teenager with no friends. He sometimes tries to shock his mother with mean pranks like pretending to be dead on the floor with ketchup in place of blood, but his mother is used to his shenanigans. Whenever she tries to bring a new boyfriend home, Nemo scares them away by predicting their deaths, like the time he tells a guy he'll be run over by a train in a week. Afterward Nemo ignores his mother's scolding by jumping off the window, but the mom knows there's a roof outside and he's fine. The next day at school, an older Anna joins Nemo's class, and Nemo realizes he still likes her. Later when everyone goes to the beach, Anna asks him to swim together, but Nemo scares her away by calling everyone idiots. This makes Nemo see a future where his adult self runs into Anna at the train station, but she's married with kids and barely says hi before leaving. Using a picture to remember the beach day again, teenager Nemo decides to change his answer and tells Anna that he can't swim. Anna decides to keep him company, and this choice greatly impacts him later. Nemo's mother and Harry decide to live together, and now Nemo and Anna are step-siblings. Dinner is awkward, but Anna keeps playing footsie with him under the table. After their parents go to sleep, the two teenagers sneak around to share a bed and spend the night getting busy. The next morning when they must get ready for school, Nemo has to carefully sneak around to avoid their parents finding out what they're doing. Whenever the parents call them siblings, they respond they aren't actually related. Then Nemo jumps into the other reality, where his teen self is taking care of his dad, who is now wheelchair-bound and has memory problems. Nemo has to do everything from cooking to giving the man baths, and he swears he has everything he needs here, so he refuses to call his mom since she never called either. However whenever he goes out on his bike, he yells into the emptiness to deal with his inner turmoil. This Nemo's hobby is writing sci-fi stories, but the tale is actually another of his alternate futures. In that timeline, an adult Nemo is under cryosleep in a space station that is traveling to Mars, and machines take care of the entire crew. This teen Nemo makes choices by throwing a coin. One night he decides to go to the school dance and finds Elise making a scene with her much older boyfriend Stefano. She has a panic attack in the middle of the dance floor, but then she stands up as if nothing had happened and approaches Nemo to ask him to come with her since she remembers him from their childhood days. Outside, a crying Elise needs a distraction, so Nemo tells her some interesting facts he knows about Mars. This makes Elise ask him to swear he'll spread her ashes on Mars one day. Nemo tries to kiss her, but Elise pulls back, saying she isn't a good person because of how her mental problems make her act. Nemo doesn't care and tries again, but as soon as their lips brush, Elise runs away. Suddenly the memories jump to another timeline again. Here Nemo the TV narrator is married to Anna and they have a family together. After work, Nemo begins driving away, but when he reaches the road, he accidentally hits an animal and the vehicle falls into the ocean, indicating this is the drowning memory from before and this is where one of his many timelines end. In the hospital, Feldman tells Nemo to concentrate and stick to the timelines where he's alive. In the mother reality, teenage Nemo and Anna are having the time of their lives. Whenever their parents go away, they immediately play around the house and get frisky on any surface available, swearing their love for each other forever. When that Nemo falls asleep, timelines jump again and Nemo is now taking care of his disabled dad. That night instead of writing a story, Nemo writes a letter to Elise. The next morning, Nemo goes to see Elise at her house, only to find her with Stefano again. Hurt and disappointed, Nemo rides away in his bike while crying, and ends up having an accident in the middle of the road. Soon the ambulance picks him up to take him to the hospital, and while in a coma, Nemo wonders what would have happened if he made a different choice. Time goes back and shows Nemo waiting for Stefano to leave before approaching Elise. He gives her the love letter and kisses her, but Elise turns him down, saying she's in love with Stefano. When a disappointed Nemo goes home, he tells his father that he'll marry the first girl who dances with him tonight. Later at another school dance, Nemo sees Elise with Stefano, and to make her jealous, he immediately asks Jean to dance and kisses her. Jean thinks Nemo's feelings are real and after the dance, she leaves with him on his bike as he swears he'll make a better life for himself with a big house, his own pool, and a great family. This is the timeline where Nemo marries Jean and becomes a businessman. When he falls into the pool, there are two different results, in one future he drowns, and in the other Jean saves him. However Jean can tell Nemo is always distant and doesn't pay much attention to her. She finds a letter where Nemo says everything is predictable and he's bored, but he doesn't remember writing it. Later he puts his hand on a candle just to feel something. Now timelines change again, finding teenage Nemo and Anna getting frisky, except this time their parents come home early and find them red-handed. The adults announce they're getting a divorce and that what the teens are doing is sickening, but they run to another room to avoid the scolding. Anna knows Harry is moving to New York for a new job, so she asks Nemo to wait for her until one day they can meet again at the lighthouse. Nemo accepts and they say goodbye to each other by getting busy one last time. The night Anna leaves, Nemo tries to run after the car to stop it, but he loses track of it and gets confused by two bikes. As weeks pass, the teens try to write to each other, but their parents throw their letters away before they see them. Years pass and Nemo is now a young adult living in an apartment in New York. 
He works as a pool cleaner, and he still hasn't forgotten about Anna, who is still in New York too. As their reunion approaches, timelines jump again to look at the space station. Here, the sleeping crew is finally waking up from cryosleep, and Nemo whispers Anna's name before he's taken by the machines. After getting a good wash, Nemo mingles with the crowd and chats with new friends. Thinking about Mars makes him think of Elise, and the timeline jumps to the Nemo in a coma, who wonders what would have happened if he hadn't given up so fast. Time rewinds to the moment Elise says she's in love with Stefano, but this time Nemo kisses her again and makes her choose him. This is the timeline where Nemo marries Elise and works as a TV narrator. In one future they have the accident on the bridge, but in the other they get a house and have a family. However, Elise still has mental health issues and almost never leaves the bed. The kids feel frustrated because their mother won't love them enough, and Nemo has trouble trying to cheer them up during hard times. One day, Nemo is throwing a birthday party for one of the kids. When he goes to check on Elise, she feels guilty as heck and finally leaves the bed, determined to be a better mother. She joins the dance floor and at first everyone feels awkward, but soon they understand her enthusiasm and the kids play along with her. It's a very fun afternoon that makes their bond stronger, and that night, the whole family falls asleep together. However the next day, Nemo finds Elise having a breakdown under the rain in the middle of the street. All the neighbors are watching them, but Nemo ignores them and he brings Elise inside, promising to always take care of her. In this reality, Nemo and Anna see each other while driving, but there's no recognition speaking of Anna. Memories go back to the pool cleaner reality, and Nemo and Anna finally reunite when they see each other at the station. They immediately to go Nemo's apartment to have some adult fun together, but after they're done, Anna explains they must take it slow because she isn't ready to jump back into their relationship yet, since she had thought she already lost him and now she's afraid of love. Anna gives Nemo her number and tells him to call her in two days so they can meet at the lighthouse. However after Anna leaves, it starts to rain and the water falls on the piece of paper, ruining Anna's number. In the future, old Nemo explains that day it rained because of the butterfly effect behind a Brazilian man that boiled an egg. Refusing to give up, young Nemo goes to the bench in front of the lighthouse and sleeps there every day, waiting for Anna to show up. One time he wakes up when he feels her hand on his hair, but sadly it's only a dream. Still desperate, Nemo draws a circle around the spot he saw her at. Then it's time to return to Elise's timeline, who is still having emotional breakdowns. Nemo tells her that in another life, they used to be cave people and that he saved her from a bear that almost ate her. Nemo thinks that saving her now from her own mind is the same duty. Suddenly we see the Nemo from the facility driving down the street, and he stops the car when pool cleaner Nemo walks by. He gets out of the car and tries to follow him, only to enter a weird building where he finds helicopters building a beach from zero. At that moment Feldman asks him to remember again, and now kid Nemo sees himself getting married to Elise and having the accident on the bridge. Elise dies, but Nemo survives with a scar on his face. This Nemo never recovers from the psychological damage though, and he keeps Elise's ashes at home while he works at taking pictures and videos of animals and plants going through decomposition. In the reality with an alive Elise, she says she's tired of Nemo loving the car more than her, so Nemo lits the car on fire to prove his love. At that moment the constructors of reality pass by and Nemo finds himself with Jean again, who is crying. She's learned from their lawyer that he's left all his assets under Jean's name, making her think he's planning something crazy. Not being able to take it anymore, Nemo gets his old coin and leaves the house, deciding to live by the coin again so he can feel something. After the coin tells him not to end things in front of a train, Nemo goes to the airport and sees a man waiting for Mr. Jones. Nemo pretends he's Jones and he's taken to a fancy hotel, where he tries his best to look like the man on the ID. This is the reality where he's in the bathtub, and when he comes out, he finds a hitman shooting him thinking he's Jones. His body is buried in the middle of the forest, but eventually the cops find it and Gene has to recognize him in tears. Suddenly the timelines rewind and the Nemo in a coma sees how his parents reunite just to take care of him. He also sees himself writing and this takes him to the timeline of him Mars, where he and the rest of the crew are going on a ride on the red planet. It turns out this is the timeline with the dead Elise, and Nemo is keeping his promise by spreading her ashes all over the land. Meanwhile in the timeline with alive Elise, she has another breakdown and says she still loves Stefano. Nemo doesn't believe her and hugs her, saying he loves her, causing Elise to apologize and say I love you in return. However when Nemo falls asleep, Elise abandons her family without saying a word. A little Nemo is now in a metaphorical theater watching how Elise becomes a hairstylist. She comes across Stefano again, but she doesn't recognize him and he leaves without a proper reunion. Meanwhile in the timeline with the dead Elise, Nemo discovers someone else had the car accident instead of him. Since the victim is a friend from work, Nemo goes to the funeral and discovers the man's widow is Anna. He approaches her to offer his condolences, but nothing else happens. A few days later, he shows up at Anna's home and proposes they could share their experience over having lost a loved one, but Anna is scared by having a stranger coming onto her and turns him down. Suddenly Nemo sees himself dying in the drowning car, the bathtub, and the boy in the coma reaching an end as well. 
Then it jumps to the space station, where Nemo discovers Anna is part of the crew too, but before they can chat much, an asteroid shower hits the station and everyone dies in the explosion. Now Nemo jumps through a series of different memories as Feldman tells him to concentrate. Then he wakes up in the weird facility again, and when he goes outside, instead of being caught he sees a sign on a plane telling him to wake up. Nemo runs to his mother's house, but the woman there doesn't recognize him and has a different child, who jumps on Nemo to fight him when he tries to hug his mom. Suddenly the memory changes and Nemo is in a straight jacket while a younger Feldman puts him through a psychological test in the facility. During lunchtime, Nemo eats a fortune cookie and finds a note saying Nemo leave. In the future, Nemo learns that the people have voted for him to die, but he doesn't care and goes back to his story. In the facility, Nemo puts the note together with a sign, telling him to leave now. As soon as he makes it outside, he sees messages everywhere, a sign tells him to read the news, a newspaper tells him to look at the end of the street, and when he does, he sees the Hollywood sign telling him to call a certain number. Nemo dials the number and hears his father's voice, but he thinks it's just a prank. Afterward, Nemo runs to his old home, which is in ruins. Under all the dust, he finds a disc that he puts inside the DVD player and discovers a recorded message from his old self. Old Nemo can guess everything young Nemo is going to say and answers accordingly, he also predicts Nemo will fall on a broken chair. Then old Nemo explains that this strange world is a reality where Nemo was never born, because of many reasons, maybe his parents never met, or maybe his seed never made it to an egg, or maybe his parents died younger. Young Nemo's consciousness is stuck in some sort of limbo, but old Nemo says Anna made some calculations and young Nemo must stay alive until 5.50 am on February 12, 2092. Then Nemo runs out of the house and sees a giant foot stomp on the building to destroy it. As the facility doctors take him away, the future is shown again, with the journalist ending the recording at 5.41. The man is very confused, and old Nemo explains neither of them nor the city exist, they're all the imaginations of a nine-year-old boy faced with an impossible choice. That day at the train station, Kid Nemo finds himself having to make an impossible choice, so all these memories are him looking at all the futures to decide correctly. However there isn't such a thing as a wrong choice, so in the end, Kid Nemo decides not to choose at all and runs away from both parents. As the vision of the future begins coming apart, old Nemo lies on his bed and dies on camera while saying Anna's name. Meanwhile the adult Nemo sleeping by the lighthouse finally meets with Anna and they reunite with a hug. The universe comes to a stop and every single timeline begins rewinding until it goes back to little Nemo and his lack of choice, which gets his parents back together. This allows him to stay with kid Anna and they spend their childhood reverse skips rocks together. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.